Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps to get my channel promoted and I appreciate it. Uh, I love it when you leave comments too, so feel free to leave a comment. Um, years ago when I was coming up with bracelet designs, uh, I tend to make sim simple sorts of things sometimes uh, because sometimes you have a stone that's just pretty and you want to kind of not uh, have too many embellishments to detract from the stone itself. And I came up with this idea for a bracelet that sits over your, uh, it sits on your wrist but kind of hangs a little bit over the back of your hand. And here I thought I invented something new, but then somebody told me, oh, that's called a sweater bracelet. So today I'm going to show you how to make a sweater bracelet. I think they make for attractive bracelets and they seem pretty popular. So uh, I picked out a good stone for this one, I think, and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, before we get started, uh, I wanted to thank some groups of people. I particularly want to thank my patrons, who are my core group of supporters. I appreciate not only the financial help that they provide for me, but also the nice atmosphere that they've created over on my Patreon. So they have a great uh, community growing over there. So thanks for that, all of you. The other group is my YouTube subscribers who have grown tremendously over the past couple of years. I'm up to, um, we're approaching 11,000, which is amazing. I think we're at about uh, 10,900 right now. So uh, thank you for that, and thanks for all of your nice comments and support as well. I really appreciate the super thanks and the buy me a coffees. With the rising price of metals, uh, those contributions really help uh, to keep me in supply. So thank you for that. Okay, well, let's get started on this project. These are a couple of my design idea books. I'm currently using this one. Uh, there's four or five different cover designs on the merch store if you're interested. Ever since I started sketching up my designs in advance before I started working on a project, I ended up with a better outcome. So, oops, I'm getting pretty deep into this one now, looks like. Okay, so here's the little peach moonstone that I have. It's a, uh, let's see, it's about. 22 millimeters by 22 by 11 or 12, I think. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it does have an interesting kind of shape to it. The edges here are kind of domed where the bezel's top is going to need to be, so I'm going to have to do some creative filing to make this fit this nicely. It also does something which is sometimes a problem is that it dips down pretty low on the ends here. And so we'll have to do some, uh, like I said, some creative shaping of the bezel. I also pulled out some really tall quarter inch uh, fine, silver, fine silver bezel strip. Uh, this is actually pretty thin stuff. It's 28 gauge, I think, but I don't have any 26 right now, so I'm just going to use that. Um, the way this bracelet's set up is I'm going to use a single piece of a six gauge half round wire. I'm going to find the center of it and I'm going to file a notch in it so that I can bend it sharply there so I get a nice sharp corner. And then after that, uh, we'll solder it back together so it has a, it's in a kind of a chevron shape. Uh, put our bezel in here in the crook of it and solder that in. And then uh, after we polish and everything, we can shape these to where they taper like that or bend this way a little bit. Um, and then we'll be pretty close to done. So it's not a terribly complicated project, but it produces a pretty uh, cool looking bracelet. So, because these, this causes this part to kind of sit right up here on your wrist. So. <laughs> All right, so I think first we'll make a bezel and I'm just gonna do my standard kind of bezel to start with. The only difference is for the bottom of this, I'm gonna use 18 gauge sheet. Well, normally I'd use something thinner, like 26, but this is going to be attached to the, to the band here. And that's going to be the only place where it's attached, so I want it to be some relatively solid silver there. This one I'm going to try, since we got all these corners, I'm going to try and have the solder joint be on one of these sides like there, in there somewhere. So I'm going to just uh, make a bend to start with. 
so that that'll end up leaving that end right at the middle of that side. I'm going to want this to be relatively snug because I don't want to have to deal with all these corners. Uh, too much excess. Then things start to wrinkle on you and it's embarrassing for everybody. When I uh, make a mark to cut this, I'm going to make it just a tiny bit beyond where they meet. And then we'll cut it there so we have a little room left over to file off. Get it nice and flat. If you haven't been to my channel before, I typically use exclusively hard silver sheet solder. And I use a flux called uh, Mighty Flux, which is a liquid flux that I spray on with a spray bottle or drip on with a, uh, an eyedropper, thanks to one of my followers who sent that to me. Let's go ahead and solder this. Torch is a Smith Silversmith model, which is their acetylene air model. So it's a very nice torch. I like it. He's the number one tip for almost everything. Thank you, Flying Chef, for the little dropper bottle. Thursday, I will be talking about some exciting news, so make sure to check back for my Thursday video. Let's do a little bit of reshaping. good on our size and shape here. At least on the bottom so far. <laughs> All right. Like I said the stone isn't perfectly symmetrical so I'm going to try and remember which side's which. It's pretty close. With the exception of this stone being kind of a weird shape and cut. This should be a beginner project, I think. So it might be a good good way to add some inventory to a bracelet rack. You wouldn't have to use this shape of stone. You could use any kind of stone. I've oftentimes used round or oval stones. I don't know if I ever did a square one or not. But let's just use this corner right here. If you're soldering on a big thick uh, bottom like this to this thin bezel, the disparity in the mass between the two is going to make it a little more challenging to get the bottom piece hot enough for the bezel to solder to it without you melting the top piece. So it helps a little bit to leave a little on the outside uh, so you have a place to focus some of that heat into the bottom sheet while actively avoiding the bezel itself. So we're going to cut out a rectangle here. This problem will be amplified just a bit because of this thick sheet that I'm using for the bottom. But I really want it to be sturdy, so... I don't want a flimsy, flimsy bezel. <laughs> what would people say? One way you can deal with that uh, 
with the thickness here is once this is kind of we'll spray some flux on there and, and heat it so it dries the flux that'll kind of glue it in place and after we get our solder placed we can tip it up a little bit heat from underneath that sometimes makes it easier So we're throwing six or seven of them in there, and then I'm just going to kind of push these up against the edge. Just kind of need to be touching the edge and the bottom. So you reheat this a little bit, that flux will get a sticky again. And then those little pieces of solder are less likely to move around when I, if, if I tip this up to get it hot from the bottom. That's one of those things about when you first start uh, silversmithing. It takes a while to figure out where to put the heat uh, in different situations. But generally, where there's more mass, it takes longer to get the temperature up. So if there's a lot more mass in this sheet, if I heat it from the bottom like this, until I start seeing some flow on the solder inside of that, then I can set it down and start heating from above as well. So I'm seeing some solder start to flow in. That way the, the bezel was not exposed to direct flame while I was getting it up to temperature, making it less likely to really melt it. Now I'm just going to trim this off relatively close. You want to make sure not to bevel underneath when you're cutting these off. You can use a saw if you prefer. These little Fisker shears work pretty well. So I, I measured uh, based on another bracelet I had that I wanted it to be about that size. So it's kind of a not a huge one, but not a small one either. And I'm gonna cut this to about it's about seven inches or 17 and a half, uh, 17 and three quarters centimeters. Um, and that's not just from here to here. That's actually following the line here. So I calculated in the extra curve that it reduces the length of the overall piece. So that's what we'll measure it at. But first I'm going to cut this off flat and then file it flat. You can use your miter vise jig for stuff like this if you want to. Or if you need to, brace it against your bench pin. Whatever your method of filing is. Okay, now I'm going to spend a little bit of time flattening this. If you've never had to flatten some wire that's been spooled, sometimes it's twisted a little bit, sometimes it's not straight in this dimension, so we'll start by getting it to lay flat on the table. I find that if I use these flat nose pliers and just hold the piece, then I can use my fingers uh, to bend it a little more smoothly. That's pretty close to the center, so let's cut it off right here. The good thing about this style of bracelet is if I, ask, if, I, if I feel like it's too long when I'm done, if I want it to be a little bit smaller, because these ends just are, they just come to an end and are rounded, I can just cut them off shorter. I think what's, uh, I'm going to get the 
the notch started right there with the saw just in order to make sure that it's in we get it right in the center and then I'm going to use the file here the corner of it to kind of file a 90 degree notch there be right back I just got a, a notch started there so I don't jump around too much I'm going to use that corner like this this will allow us to make a sharper bend in the wire change the angle of the notch to be more than uh, 90 degrees if you want to by just filing more on either side. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I don't, I'm going to want to go almost all the way through so I get a pretty sharp, sharp bend here. Now, bend it like this. Get a pretty steep angle. just a little bit further. I think that'll be fine. Okay, so let's solder that closed. And I'm just going to use a little bit of solder that I have left over here. And I'll cut a little bit. If you're new to this and using a little butane torch, this may be a little much for that kind of a torch. So, probably won't have enough heat to get this whole thing up to the temperature you want it to be. Um, so you might want to, before you start doing a big project like this, you might want to get a little bit hotter torch. The other thing is, uh, I'm going to do a little kick soldering here where I pick up a piece on the pick here. And heat this piece up to the solder temperature and then just touch it there. And if you're interested in that, that's a really useful technique. I'll put a, a link up there for you. A good video about that. That took me from being a rank amateur to a little less rank amateur. <laughs> I'll file a little bit of excess solder off the bottom here. Interestingly, I have something new to try here. I have one of these ceramic um, perforated blocks. I'm going to give that a try and see how that works. I'm thinking 
I'm going to use a magnesia block to kind of hold things into position, but it'll be interesting to see if I use T pins, I can keep this kind of positioned so that the solder doesn't run as far up as it might want to. That way it should be able to run a little bit up the sides of the, the bezel here, but I don't want it to run all the way down to the edge because I want to be able to curve those outwards a little bit. So let's put some, uh, let's make sure we have solder. Solder if you're across the Atlantic. I've never actually used one of these ceramic boards before, so it'll be interesting to see how it works. It's a lot more massive than our bezel again, so most of the heat is going to be applied to the wire. This is pretty chunky wire, it's 6 gauge half wire. Mostly this shape for the moment, uh, while it pickles. But I just wanted to make sure we got a good solid solder going on there. Looks like we do. But what I'm going to do once we uh, have this all cleaned up is I'm going to bend that outwards like this on both sides and shape them into that. It's kind of a curve like I have drawn out here. And then uh, after it's pickled and polished, Actually, might maybe just after it's pickled, but before it's polished, we're gonna make the markings for the height of the bezel for this particular stone, since it has those weird uh, sides on it. And I'll show you a trick to do that. So let's let this pickle for a while, and then we'll come back and do that. Okay, so this is a really deep bezel. And I want to elevate the stone just a little bit so I have some, uh, because these taper down to the ends uh, so low, I want to make sure that this is elevated a little bit in the bezel. I may need to put two in there. I think one's probably going to do it, but we'll see. So the other thing I did is I took some Sharpie and I, I outlined the top part of it here. And I'm actually going to use a piece of... Uh, dental floss here. This is if, if you're one of those people who absolutely has to stick their stone in the bezel before to see how it looks, <laughs> dental floss is a good, a good bet because then you can just pop it out. But for our purposes today, I want to take a pin. This is the reason I did the Sharpie. And I kind of want to make a mark wherever this stone reaches to. That'll give me kind of an idea 
where to file that down to. So we'll do that next. Probably going to do the majority of it with the file here. And then I'll use my rotary tool. get it where I want it to be. Smoothed out nicely because it kind of dips down in the center here too. Okay, so I'm going to go fine tune the rest of it with the rotary tool. I'll be right back. So I got it kind of uh, smoothed down and you can see it's got kind of those weird little tapers and um, one of the things I'm going to do on these points because they're so sharp is I'm going to use my little file here and I'm going to thin that bezel out just a tiny bit just right on the tip there not so much that it cuts right through just enough to, to reduce the mass of the metal there, the thickness of the metal. So doing that on the on the tips of the corners here <clears throat> allows me to, to push that in better. So um, I do this a little differently than some people. <clears throat> Most people use a bezel pusher and a burnishing tool. I'm just going to use the flat side of my chain nose pliers here. I'm going to push this up against the stone first. I'm going to do it on the points in particular straight on. Try and lay those over. So I want them to kind of curve around that, that tip. Once you get everything kind of laid down there, you're going to start rolling it over the top of the flat side here. Get everything all kind of really laid down. stage of the setting is going to be using the rounded outer part of this or a burnishing tool whichever you prefer. So to rub that top edge. Smooth it out. I'll be using the Dremel with a with a fine polishing wheel kind of smooth out that top. But before we do that, we can make it into this shape too. Okay. So let's see. We can use the nylon jog pliers when we get to the point where it's got to be bent pretty sharply. Mostly we can use leverage though probably to get it started. bracelet mandrel.
now we're just going to have to do a little fine tuning of the shaping. But basically, this won't fit me very well probably, but if it rides up higher on your wrist like that, it makes it visible if you're wearing long sleeves. So a lot of people really like those. Um, like I said, I will finish shaping it at the end here, and I'm going to smooth out those top edges and, you know, give it a quick buff over again, and then we'll get some pictures and put them at the end. So that was the Peach Moonstone Sweater Bracelet. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave, and check out some of my other videos. I have about 310 uh, videos up last time I checked. Uh, there's stuff for beginners, there's stuff for intermediate kind of folks, and there's uh, more advanced stuff that's even challenging for me. So after you check those out, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notifications and stuff of when I have new videos, uh, which incidentally are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Uh, so three times a week you'll get a new video from me. Uh, the other thing you should do is check out the video description down below. There's some relevant links. Uh, there's a link about safety, which is important. You should check that out. And then there's also some ways to support the channel. There's the Buy Me a Coffee link, which provides uh, a little bit of cash to buy supplies. There's uh, my Patreon link if you want to get more involved with the channel and, and that group over there. Uh, there's a merch store where you can get one of those nice design idea books. Or um, there's going to be something new electronic coming up pretty soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And then finally, there's a link to my website if you want to buy some jewelry. So take care. Thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing.